welcome to one of the most unique theaters I've ever seen in my entire life. This is Cineteca Nacional in the Ciudad de Mexico, Mexico City. It is a wonderful piece of architecture that is well worth visiting here in 360 VR video. So feel free to look in any direction you would like. This is the entrance over here and we are met with this beautiful canopy. We're gonna walk around, admire the architecture, and I'll tell you a little bit about the history and why they built this huge architectural marvel. So right there, you can buy the tickets and they play art house films and they play films, classic films as well, uh, from their own archive. Now this is not just a cinema that has a series of theaters that you can watch, but it's also a film archive. Right now they're storing more than 15,000 films, but they have a capacity to protect more than 50,000. Look how marvelous this is. So let's go through here. We're going to wrap around and then come back here. <laughs> and just admire as we were walking around. And it's very interesting because most theaters from what I'm used to, especially in the US, are dark inside a huge building and you can't see the outside world. But here, the theater is exposed. Literally, the doors to the theater are outdoors. Very fascinating. So there is a bookstore that sells all books about cinema. So this is a cinema lover's dream, I think, personally. There's a few areas to eat, and I'll show you where to buy the popcorn. show you the prices for the popcorn as well. So here's your, you, where you'll buy your popcorn. And you'll, you can also buy nachos, which I find very funny because nachos is like a Mexican-American thing that is brought back to Mexico for the movie theaters. Mmm. Oh, that smells so good. Right over here. For example, you can get one huge popcorn and two drinks for a hundred pesos, um, which is, that is low, wow. 200 pesos is 10 bucks? That is low. So five bucks for, for two drinks and a popcorn. That's inexpensive. Let's go upstairs. And tickets are equally as inexpensive. Nowhere near the $20 ticket prices in the US. So let's go up here. And this is, now what we're looking at here is the modern extension. This was done just shortly ago. It was an area for sweets. So if you're not feeling savory, you can get yourself, well, you can even get yourself a hot dog. Oh my God, okay. And they also have a coffee shop as well, which is really fun. With actual espresso too, which is interesting. Because usually American coffee shops have like terrible drip coffee. American cinemas, I mean. So this entire thing was built by Michael Rodgkin. He's the architect who made the modern extension. That area we're going to visit soon is the original, built in 1984. So here we see that they have 10 cinemas in total. And there's even a bar area, which is amazing. Look at this. See, the doors are open almost to the elements. You won't get wet, don't worry. It's not completely transparent. There's actually a glass canopy right above. So you are undercover. 
So why did they build this in the first place? Well, there used to be an original one. Just a short ride away. But in 1982, a massive series of explosions was unleashed on the original scene at Teca Nacional. It killed three people and injured more than 50. It was a terrible, terrible disaster. Many countless films were lost. Some of the most important films to Mexican cinema history. It was a terrible loss for the arts of this amazing country. The thing is, people found it rather weird because there was no explanation that the firefighters, the detectives, no one could find a reasonable explanation why the original Cineteca exploded. And it was a series of a few different explosions. So rumors started flying about. And people were speculating. Was it arson? Was it ma uh, negligence where uh, they left uh, some incendiary object next to all the rolls of film, which are indeed highly flammable? Well. Something very interesting was found out a few years later after that terrible explosion. 1968, Mexico. In the city. In the neighborhood of San de Lopo. Pardon my pr uh, pronunciation. There was a huge, massive student protest leading up to the Olympic Games that was going to be in this city. Students, among many other people, were pissed off at the government due to different policies and due to them spending so much money for the Olympics and a lot of people in poverty and the entire economy languishing. Thousands and thousands of students started marching the streets. And they marched all the way to Tal de Loco, uh, which is an area right now that's also touristy because there's these pyramid ruins. The thing is, Mexico City, or the country itself, wanted to crack down. They did not want this huge student protest to build a, give a bad name to the city right before the Olympics, right before the city is on the world stage, and right before millions of tourists come over here well the military came in declared martial law inside the city and they cracked down on these protests the thing is they fired upon the crowd of students no one knows exactly how many died was known as one of the worst massacres in Mexican history. Minimum 40 people died, but some people think that more than 400 were killed. Here we see uh, some of the skyscrapers. 400, up to 400, who knows exactly what is the number, were murdered. Well, how is this related to cinema? How is this related to a Cineteca Nacional. There was a documentary filmmaker filming this entire event from a bird's eye view from one of the buildings. They got excellent footage of exactly what happened. The thing is, the government wanted to crack down on the exact things that that happened. They did not want anything to come out of it. They tried to cover it up. Well, that documentarian had to hand over that footage to the government. They put it under lock and key into the original 
Cineteca Nacional, which is the film archives. Conveniently, that footage was lost in 1982, and no one will ever see exactly what transpired that day in 1968 in Tal Loco. Is it coincidence? Is it conspiracy? Who knows? But then in 1984, they built this area that we're walking through right now, which is built by an architect by the last name of Roche. This was originally uh, called La Plaza de los Compositores, the Composers Plaza, but then it quickly became the new Cineteca Nacional. And then we have a few cinemas here. We have six cinemas, and there's one huge one down there. Um, here are some churros. And this is a pretty famous spot over here with the queue. It's one over here by, uh, by the restaurant. And I love how they incorporated nature into it, which is nice. It's absolutely amazing to have this cinema, despite the sad circumstances behind its origin. It's nice to have this beautiful uh, cinema open to the elements. It's very interesting, different from, as I mentioned before, the dark kind of cramped cinemas of the US, which I love dearly, but uh, this is a nice change of pace. There's a gift shop over here as well. I actually bought myself a uh, souvenir. I love uh, collecting tote bags and they had this beautiful tote bag. And here we have a film memorabilia shop. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so <laughs> the poster for this film is very explicit, but here's the, the two rooms. I'm not going to walk in because I don't think I'll, I'll be able to allow to with the camera, but here are the two main cinemas and they're huge. The capacity is uh, pretty, pretty damn big. And here we see the prices, all oh, the prices, they don't have them listed right here. That's so cool that they have a film in the video shop. Wow. So I recommend watching a film. I, uh, once things get better, in terms of the entire pandemic situation. I recommend maybe coming and seeing a film. You're not gonna spend too much money on it. Maybe catch a classic Mexican film and learn a little bit about Mexican cinema. And, or just admire this beautiful architecture. It's right by Coyoacán. So if you are visiting La Casa Azul of Frida Kahlo, it is within walking distance. It's about 10 minute walk. It's very close. Highly recommend combining those two. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. And if you're a supporter watching this a month before it's released publicly, thank you so much for lending your support to Urbanus. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day everyone from the Cineteca Nacional.